What's up, motherfucker? Morning, David. Mm. Wait, am I allowed to curse out here? No cursing. I'm like, got shit balls, sugar tits. No cursing, right? Yeah. Where mm. should we start? How about we start with nobody gives a flying fuck about MMA? All right, apologize for saying flying. How about nobody gives a shit about MMA? Come on, man. Nielsen statistics show that there's 451 million people that currently watch mixed martial arts or have shown an interest in it. There's 7.8 billion people on the planet, which means that there are currently 7.3 billion people that are still allergic to parties. Even throughout its long storied history and evolution, people consider mixed martial arts to be a niche sport and a niche product. This is why I changed my name to Tampon, pulled some strings, I'm here to tell you and everybody else why they should love mixed martial arts. Let's find some common fucking ground. What are the three basic human instincts? Self-preservation, social, sexual. We know how to argue on the internet, we know how to fuck, and we know how to defend ourselves. Fighting is a universal language. People know how to fight and defend themselves before they know how to talk. It's a primal instinct. We have a natural attraction to violence. It could be a fight on TV, past or present war, a video game, a movie, a bar fight with the accuracy and precision of Stevie Wonder. Of course, nobody gives a shit about mixed martial arts. Nobody cares how violence is presented to us, how it's packaged, and what do you call it. People just know they like it. Oh my god! Oh, dick twist! <laughs> so how do you turn violence into sport? A safe sport? A sport that's currently a multi-billion dollar empire and under the confines of publicly traded companies? But most importantly, a sport that people can actually watch and care about. Now I'm gonna act like me and your production assistant and uh, start this off with a bang. Ah! So the origins of MMA date back 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. After abandoning shit like math, alarm clocks, Santa Claus, chastity belts, democracy, science, gyros, curse words, sexy ass women, and everything else awesome on the fucking planet, a bunch of naked dudes got together and thought of new innovative ways to kill each other. So like Brad Pitt in a supermodel's vagina, the world gave a warm welcome to one of the first variations of mixed martial arts, pancreation. Pancreation was a combination of the oldest sports in the world like boxing and wrestling. It was no holds barred with eliminated rules like no eye gouging and biting. The only way to win was by knockout, submission by giving your opponent the finger, or performing a fatality. Greece went fucking bananas about this sport. People went crazy for it. People actually died during competition and they still put in the Olympic Games in 658 BC. Meanwhile, in ancient China, the world saw their own variation of mixed martial arts. That makes MMA and coronavirus the only two things that were manufactured in China that work as advertised and last longer than 20 minutes. Take that, China! Bang bang! He's heating up! It was called Lei Tai, no holds barred competition with or without weapons. The only way to win was by surrender, death, killing your opponent, or throwing your opponent off the stage. And if you lived through the last 10 years, you know all about knocking powerful people off their pedestal for sport. Listen, man, by the 19th century, martial arts was popping up all over the place and spreading faster than Kim Kardashian's butt cheeks on a Ray J sex tape. All sorts of different variations, all sorts of different styles, and all sorts of different venues. One of those venues was a circus owned by Gaston Gracie. In 1916, Gracie would put Japanese judoka Mitsuyo Maeda in their shows to do demonstrations and competitions. You see, like, when World War I was going down, a lot of folks in Japan were getting the fuck out of Dodge and decided to settle and start communities in Brazil. I mean, Brazilians didn't really dig it, but Brazilians love martial arts. One Brazilian who loved it was the son of Gasto, Carlos Gracie. As a thank you to Gasto for helping him get settled, he decided to teach Carlos the ways of the force. His knowledge was passed down to his brothers, one of which was Helio Gracie, the smallest of the bunch, who expanded on that shit to be effective for little guys, and thus Gracie Jiu-Jitsu was born. Now before the Tide Pod Challenge, Mannequin Challenge, Bottle Cap Challenge, ALS Challenge, Kiki Challenge, Kylie Jenner challenge, there was the Gracie challenge. No holds barred competition to prove Gracie Jiu Jitsu was a superior style. While in the process, Huey and Gracie gave birth to the money making, panty dropping idea of the super fight. One of the earliest super fights in history was Helio Gracie versus Kimura. I mean, he wasn't the only one doing it. Judo Jean LaBelle, another big dick bandit and savage, used to torture boxers, wrestlers, and other martial artists just for shits and gifts. Speaking of boxing and wrestling, Two of the oldest styles of the bunch was doing gangbusters all over the fucking planet. And not just any sort of wrestling, but pro wrestling. What's that? I know what you're thinking. Why are you going to talk about that fake shit, that pro wrestling stuff on an MMA program? Well, hold on to your suspension of disbelief, my friend, because it's about to take a fucking beating. 
The early carnival games would feature catch wrestling and real wrestling. They would call the competitors hookers. But promoters thought, why risk our biggest stars losing when we can stage the competition? Hence, the modern day concept of pro wrestling was born. One of pro wrestling's biggest stars was Gorgeous George, a flamboyant, shit-talking bad guy who would spray perfume and tell the crowd to go fuck themselves on a routine basis. People would pay top dollar to watch Gorgeous George either win or get his ass kicked. Guess who was heavily influenced by Gorgeous George and pro wrestling? Sir, call me Young King now, go and watch me conquer. Shout out to my exes, check out all my concerts. They see I'm a bad man, call me Aaron Rodgers. Can't stop yet, gonna do it for my family now. When the booth got a dream about the Grammy sound. 1150, where the hell my boy Danny now? It's a man how the day's trying to slam me down. Gotta get up, never help him, make sure that I'll give up, man, I'll tell him. And we've been working hard, so if you hating hard, it's a loss, you can fall back Yeah, yeah, I swear I'm in myself, the top is where I'm going, when I'm there, I'm wanting all that Yeah, and I just want it all, when I just want it all, when I just want it all that. Yeah, and I just want it all, when I just want it all, when I just want it all, all right. Muhammad fucking Ali, the greatest of all time, credit Gorgeous George for his pro wrestling like persona and in introducing trash talking to combat sports. Ali even dabbled in pro wrestling during the course of his career, running afoul with a very popular pro wrestler from Japan, Antonio Noki. In 1976, Muhammad Ali would fight Antonio Noki in a super fight under modified rules, and despite being just as entertaining as watching flies fuck, Paint Dry, and Geely on fucking DVD, it was the first MMA-like fight that was financially successful and gained worldwide attention. Ali also took more shots to the leg than Nancy Kerrigan. 107 fucking kicks. Anyway, around this time, martial arts started making some serious headway in Hollywood, featuring some of the baddest mofos on the planet in movies and in television shows, such as Bruce Lee, who introduced MMA to the big screen in Enter the Dragon. But this was also the 70s, so people were probably too stoned to notice. Chuck Norris, the leading cause of death since the plague. And Jackie Chan, y'all look alike! By the 1980s, men, martial art movies and television shows were all the rage of mainstream pop culture. Video games as well. Don't even think I forgot about you nerds. Even our old friends the Gracie started dabbling in Hollywood, with Rory and Gracie working as an actor, technical advisor on Lethal Weapon 1, and fight choreographer on Lethal Weapon 3. He helped his family open up the first Gracie Jiu-Jitsu school in the United States, released a documentary, and was looking for new ways to introduce America to Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Meanwhile, a bunch of corporate executives circling around the fucking World Combat Arcade Machine were looking for new concepts and ideas to put on television to feed America's hunger for violence. Bro, seriously, with boxing's biggest star Mike Tyson in jail and no longer giving heavyweights more shots to the face than Paris Hilton, and pro wrestling's biggest promotion in the WWF facing a major fucking steroid scandal, there was definitely a huge void to fill in the violence department in the United States. In 1993, a very good year to be OJ Simpson, those same executives would team up with Rory and Gracie to bring the old Gracie challenge to the mainstream. UFC 1 would take place November 12, 1993 in Nichols Arena. Excuse me. Today, Junior! Nichols Arena in fabulous Denver, Colorado. No holds barred. In a cage. Barely any rules. Barely fucking legal. Style versus style to determine the superior martial art. You had guys like Ken Shamrock. What a goddamn savage. The boxer. Fuck wearing two gloves. The sumo guy. Holy shit, the dude from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. The Savat guy who kicked the sumo guy's teeth in the front row, and the kickboxer, who had the sweetest 90s mullet in the game, and whoever the Gracie brothers were going to pick to win the tournament. Come on, man. There were no collegiate or Olympic wrestlers, no other jiu-jitsu guys in the tournament, no judicas, no submission wrestlers, besides Ken Shermock, UFC 1 was a big fucking infomercial for Gracie jiu-jitsu. Gracie's would end up picking Hoist Gracie, the smallest and most unassuming of the bunch, and he would cut through the competition like a hot knife through fucking butter to win the entire tournament. It was a long fucking journey, but UFC 1 meant that mixed martial arts finally arrived in the United States of America. Yeah, it's the one-day contest, praying for the day I'm next. They don't even really get it a little bit, how appreciative that I am when it comes to this. I'm on some other shit, like a drug addict, I'm just so consistent with the flow like a river. And I gotta stream so current every day that I post on Twitter. When I promote it, I'm broke from it. I got a day job, make it dope for this. I got what it takes, I'm a show for it. And I'm a drive to the day that the show for will. I'm like so obsessive, kinda like psycho exes. Honestly, I suggest that you get a work ethic to get what you're destined to do. I'm
gonna prove that this shit is a method Step by step, homie let me catch my breath Never mind, I ain't got time for that I'm doing work so sleep is deprived the fact I worship the weekend like a bible camp Yeah, I'm Iverson, the way I hit the net Keeping up the grind so my mom be set She be independent to the day she rests And I'ma get the check and then relieve the stress Like A lot of people say they gonna woulda, coulda, shoulda But they never follow through I was one of those people too Until it hit me one day like a drive-by shoot I ain't even in it for the loot In it for the wrong that I really gotta prove Kid in the jungle trying to fit in with the wolf You gotta bear with me like I'm chilling with Baloo Hey, dream UFC would maintain a modest fan base, being watched by millions, getting news coverage, fighters being featured in movies like Austin Powers. That guy got convicted for murder and rape, by the way. And shows like Friends, one of my favorite episodes. They even revisited the concept of the super fight with Shamrock vs. Gracie 2 at UFC 5, which got the most pay-per-view buys during the UFC's early days. But just like everything in life, it also had a good amount of haters who had no idea what to make of it. One shot in the junk, an ounce of blood, a gust of wind, and 90s Karen went fucking crazy. Here's the thing, Shudo didn't have this problem and they started in 1986 in Japan. Pancras didn't have this problem and they started the same year as the UFC. The UFC had this problem because it was sold beyond violence, beyond a contact sport with proper controls in place like boxing, pro wrestling, even sports like football and hockey. It was packaged and sold as a fucking death match. So naturally, the UFC would attract attention from the worst kind of people. No dick shit, that's the next episode. These allegations are false. If I had to choose, I'd rather have hemorrhoids on my ass than the government. And politicians were all over the UFC's ass throughout the 90s. One politician in particular would call this human cockfighting. One politician hated the sport so fucking much, he would be hugely responsible for getting it banned across the country and taken off pay-per-view. That one man would be the necessary evil that MMA needed to get to where it is today. And what you gonna do when John McCain and all his McCainiacs run wild on you? They all got something to say. Better get out of my way. We do it all in a day. Tell them that we're not the same. Feel like a million this. Watching my back for that deviousness. I see him watching my moves all the time. So this here is like really a million hits. Go for the takedown. Levels to this, not the same now. Taking them out, better stay down. Been giving them balls like a playground, oh yeah. And you're gonna know my name. Make them all go insane. Smile at you haters, just stack up this paper. Cause me and them not the same. I got a monster inside of me. I got a monster inside. Don't wanna see all that side of me. Really, there's nowhere to hide. I've been an animal. I see the fear in your eyes. Move like a cannibal. Yeah, I'm ready to rise.